أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبا القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا صدق الله والعلي العظيم My dear brothers, my dear sisters, my dear elders, my dear scholars from wherever you are all watching from around the globe Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in today's lecture, inshallah, we shall be discussing the significance of the remembrance of Allah, known as dhikr. A very, very, very important topic which we often do not pay enough attention or concern to. Dhikr Allah should be in the forefront of every action and every intention. But the question is, is it? This topic is even more central during the holy month of Ramadan for two reasons. Number one is we know the rewards are doubled, tripled, even multiplied during this holy month. And number two, the holy month of Ramadan is supposed to provide um, a human with a sense of consciousness, um, as well as reconstructing the spirituality and connection with our Lord Allah and bringing that to the forefront of our attention. Now, we will be discussing this topic in um, several points. Number one, what are the different types of dhikr in, in Islamic context? And number two, what is the significance of dhikr? Why is it important to remember Allah or to remember the Lord? So let's discuss this very important topic and bring it into practice in our daily life. Okay. So, let's begin. The word dhikr, by definition, means remembrance. Just remembrance. And when we discuss it through the Islamic context, it is used in the sense of remembrance of Allah. The word dhikr is mentioned multiple times in the Holy Quran. Now, let's go back to the verse from the Holy Quran, which I mentioned at the start of this talk. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 41. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, idhkuru Allah dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah with much remembrance. Allah tells us much remembrance, not a bit. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran that we must remember Allah with much remembrance. Dhikran kathira. The question some may ask is, why should we remember Allah with great remembrance? What is in the benefit of the human? How should we remember him? In which methods? I will be, inshallah, talking about this today. But th firstly, I wanted to tell you a very personal story, which happened not too long ago. In fact, only a few weeks ago. I thought, why not start today's story with, today's talk, should I say, with a very personal story. So we got a phone call from a doctor a few weeks ago, um, only a few weeks ago telling us that a family member of ours, a very, very close, immediate family member of ours, in hospital has declined in health. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding their health condition and or what exactly happened, but it was very serious. When I got the phone call for the first time in my entire life, I felt so alone. It was as if someone had drawn a dark curtain on the world and my thought process was, if this individual's health keeps declining and God forbid departs, what else do we have in this world? How am I going to cope? I immediately paid some sadaqa, read some supplications and on the television screen I played a dua, um, which is dua mishlun. It was the first dua that came to my mind at that time. Dua mishlul is for, for um, calamities and for misfortune. 
We have narrations which suggest that the dua was given by the Ahl bayt to a man who was paralyzed. Anyway, long story short, um, the dua is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I wish I can just repeat the whole supplication here um, and we can break it down and um, perhaps talk about the meaning. But due to lack of time, we cannot. So back to the story. I was listening to the, to the dua and I got to the part where it said, um, you said, oh Allah, call upon me and I will respond to you. What did Allah say? He said, call upon me and I will respond to you. And it went on to say um, that, it went on to say that, and when my servants ask you, Allah says, when my servants ask you concerning me, then surely I am very near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant. When he calls on me, how beautiful is that? And I'm not joking when I say I suddenly felt, um, how can I describe it? The only way I can describe it is like a mother comforting their child. A sense of greater protection. It was as if someone, or shall I say a higher being, was saying, it's okay. It's okay. I am here and I hear what you you are saying. I can see what is happening. Um, when in a da'a it says, Oh, you who returned Yusuf to Yaqub. Oh, he who removed the um, affliction of Ayyub. Oh, he who forgave the sin of Dawood. Oh, he who chose Musa by spoken words. Oh, he who saved Nuh from drowning. What the da'a was saying is that there were greater issues and bigger problems and bigger obstacles before you. And Allah dealt with them. Suddenly, our obstacles, our issues, and our problems became so small, and our hearts felt so com comforted. This story right here is an example of the importance of dhikr, which I personally have experienced, of remembering Allah. Because no matter where, what you are going through, you will always feel comforted. No matter how alone you feel in this world, you are reminded that you are never alone. And no matter what you go through in life, there is always a greater force, our Lord, watching you, Allah. And when Allah says in the Holy Quran, Ala al-qulub, Surely with the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. This is an example of how hearts find rest. And when Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَطْمَأَنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ those who believe then whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, it's telling you, O oh human, your heart will always find rest in the remembrance of Allah. And you see it happening. You always see it happening. Now, let's go to a different what um, the different types of dhikr. What are the different types of dhikr? Remembrance of Allah. Are there different types of dhikr? We have dhikr by words and dhikr by intention. What do I mean? I, I walk in, in the streets and I see a fabulous and amazing scenery. The sunset, the trees, the skies. And I automatically think to myself, SubhanAllah, that right there is the remembrance of Allah by intention, by thought. Then we have other forms of dhikr which are by action and by words. What are they? Salah, prayer. When you pray, that is a form of dhikr and remembrance. Reading and reciting the Holy Qur'an, that is a form of dhikr. In fact, Allah refers to the Qur'an as a dhikr, which means the remembrance or the reminder, in around 55 places in the Qur'an. So when it comes to the Holy Qur'an, my dear brothers and sisters, it's extremely, extremely beneficial for us to be reading, understanding, reflecting and pondering on the words in the Holy Quran. In essence, remembering Him, Allah. Now we know in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 152, Allah says, so remember me and I will remember you. How many times have you read that ayah? Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Wait a minute, <laughs> let's just repeat that, okay? Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. Allah remembers me? Me? Who am I? You know now in the age of media, some people are dying to be mentioned 
by a, celebra a celebrity on Twitter, for example, or Instagram or Facebook, um, whatever platform you find. Um, you see they tag them, they mention them, they tweet them, they write to them, all for the possibility for that celebrity to mention them back or give them a shout out, um, as they call it. Um, this is a human and you go through all that work for the possibility for that celebrity to mention you. Allah himself says, remember me and I will remember you. I tell you, I'd rather my Lord men mention me and remember me instead of any human in this world. Um, and all it takes is to remember Allah. So simple, yet so beautiful. So when we talk about the remembrance of Allah by reciting the Quran, imagine the reward we get. Now, we know whoever recites Quran in this holy month of Ramadan, your rewards are magnified. As the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam says, if someone recites one ayah of the Holy Quran, he will be rewarded in the manner as if he had recited the entire Quran in other months. One ayah equals the rewards of the whole Quran. So let's not neglect the Holy Quran this month. Let's try to pick it up and read. Even if we are extremely busy, we can break it up during the day. It doesn't take long at all. So let's look at another ayah in the Holy Quran that mentions dhikr. In the Holy Quran, in Surah al rum verses 17 and 18, it says, So glorify Allah when you come up in up to the evening and when you enter the morning and to him are all the praises and thanks in the heavens and the earth and in the late afternoon and when you come up to the times when the day begins to decline what does that mean it means Allah is commanding you to remember him in the mornings and the evenings why why because when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is remember the Lord. Remember Allah. And the last thing you should do when you go to sleep is you should remember Allah. Contemplate on the fact that there are some individuals who did not get another chance this morning. They did not get another chance in this world and had taken their last breath after they went to sleep. And some before the end of the night had arrived. And you, my dear brothers and sisters, have woken and you have been given another chance at this life and you could not even thank our Lord for the, for the blessings. Ya Allah, thank you for the eyes that I can see for, from, for, the, for there are those who cannot see. Ya Allah, thank you for the ears that I can hear from, for there are those who cannot hear. Ya Allah, thank you for the legs that I can walk on, for there are those that cannot walk. Ya Allah, thank you for the hands that I can use. For there are those that cannot use them. And Ya Allah, thank you for the lips and the voice that I can use. For there are those who cannot talk. So Ya Allah, I will use these lips and I will use my voice to supplicate to you, to glorify you, and for you are worthy of glorification. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, are the blessings in life which we take for granted. We take for granted, and I guarantee you, until it's taken away from us, we will begin to reflect. And regular dhikr and remembrance of Allah is what will remind us of those blessings. And you know how lucky we are? Let's just move to another point now. You know how lucky we are? The school of the Ahlul Bayt, our religion have, has taught us the most amazing supplications like no other school uh, of thought or religion. You, we must utilize these du'as and supplications and use it to our advantage. The du'as left to us by the Ahlul Bayt. Now some people may question, do I need to stop what I'm doing and to sit down and, and literally supplicate and remember Allah? Some may say, I don't have time. You find in the Holy Quran in verses Surah 3, verse number 191, um, it says, those who remember Allah while standing, sitting and lying down on their sides and contemplate on the wonders of the creation. You could be lying down, you could be 
sitting, you could be standing, you could be walking by like like we mentioned earlier and you see the creation of Allah and you remember him. Dhikr is not just scheduled or scripted. Dhikr happens everywhere, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You could remember Allah and that is dhikr. Because what you may not know is that there are those whose hearts are hardened who would not be able to remember Allah or to remember their Lord or to remember God. Even if it's as simple as that. Some people's hearts do not allow them to. So if you are one of those who remember Allah when you see his creation and when you see the beauty in this world, then you must know that you are truly blessed. As we said previously, dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, consists of two main things. The movement of the tongue and its efforts in the heart, which could also manifest in thoughts and or intentions. So what we are saying is that it should not only be the movement of the tongue, but it should also be felt deep in your heart. Uttering the words, the blessed words of subhanallah, and Alhamdulillah is of course in, in itself a beauty. But when you become deeply engaged in dhikr of Allah, you are able to truly feel the pureness of Allah or the love of Allah and his religion. Let me give you an example. Tasbih Fatima al-Zahra. So beautiful. We all know the benefits of Tasbih of Fatima al-Zahra. How powerful it is. Um, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir has said that the one who recites the tasbih of Fatima to Zahra then seeks forgiveness, Allah will be, uh, he will be forgiven. Let me give you another narration. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam has said, the one who recites the tasbih of Fatima to Zahra after a wajib salah, before he stretches his legs, then Jannah becomes wajib upon him. Let me give you another example or another tradition from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He said that the one who glorifies Allah after the wajib prayer through the tasbih of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam then follows it up by saying la ilaha illa huwa Allah will forgive his sins. When we reflect on these three narrations I just mentioned you're telling me if I say the tasbih of Fatima al-Zahra, which is simply saying Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, and Subhanallah, Allah will forgive all my sins and I will enter heaven? Yes, that's what I'm saying. But my dear brothers and sisters, we must also feel that within our hearts. It must have the effect in our hearts, not just our tongue. We must not just say Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah how people sometimes say it, sometimes not even pronouncing it properly or knowing what we are saying, but we must feel it, feel it. Acknowledge Allah's presence in our life. Allah has been your utmost caretaker. As I mentioned in the story before, he controls our safety, our health, our happiness. Remember the story I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture? My dear brothers and sisters, if the tongues were to recite but the hearts were also, were also to, be, to respond, then the effects and the benefits would be maximized. The same with prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, and wallah, I tell this to myself before I say it to anyone else. Believe me, with three, ch with three children of my own, my mind does wonder sometimes when I pray. Um, we are all humans, all our minds wonders. But if we truly want to feel the benefits of prayer, of dhikr, of supplication, our hearts, my dear brothers and sisters, needs to be present. Our minds needs to be present. Not just lip service, not just movement, but reflection and intention. Ya Allah, what am I without you? That's a very important point. But also we should engage in verbal utterance of dhikr. Whenever you are th free, for example, in the car, cooking, doing chores at home, gain reward by the remembrance of Allah. Now it's Ramadan, while cooking, stir the pot, say Alhamdulillah. 
Subhanallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad while you're cooking. And just watch the blessings that come into your home. And how Allah will bless your food. Make it a habit. Allah's bounty is demonstrated in this verse of the Quran about thanking him. He the Almighty says, if you are grateful, I will surely increase you in favour. Say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. I will give you more. I will give you much more. That's the blessings that I am talking about in regards to dhikr. And the last thing, it doesn't cost you us nothing. It doesn't cost us. It doesn't cost me to say Alhamdulillah. Does it cost me to say SubhanAllah? No. Let me tell you a story. A poor person in Medina approached the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and said to him, the rich ones perform acts of goodness like freeing slaves, giving charity, performing the Hajj, which are beyond our means. And, and as a result, they probably get more rewards than us. How are we supposed to get the rewards, O Prophet? We are not rich. We cannot do some acts of goodness like freeing the slaves and giving charity. We don't have nothing. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, The one, he told them, the one who recites Allahu Akbar a hundred times shall be granted the rewards which shall exceed the rewards of freeing one hundred slaves. The one who recites SubhanAllah a hundred times shall come to have the rewards better than the rewards associated with performing Hajj. Reciting Alhamdulillah a hundred times is better than giving 100 fully laden horses as charity in the way of Allah. The one who recites La ilaha illallah a hundred times shall be of the best of people on the day of judgment. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And it doesn't cost us. Yet the rewards are there as the Prophet Muhammad has mentioned. The beautiful thing is it does not discriminate from the rich or poor. It all depends on, on the state of our heart and, and the level of Iman. The thing is, my dear brothers and sisters, dhikr benefits us and it does not even require much from us. It's easy. It's easy. It's very easy to glorify Allah. But I guarantee you that the effects will be felt in your heart for a lifetime. Okay, ending off. This Ramadan, let's train ourselves to remember Allah. Let's ensure He is before and after every action. Dhikr should be embedded within us so, so that we remember Him without even giving, giving it a second th thought. And when we have Allah, then what else do we need? Inshallah, join me tomorrow with another lecture um, addressing, I believe, the essential lessons we learn in the holy month of Ramadan. You can watch it via the mosque's um, YouTube, um, YouTube stream. I thank the organizers of this program and all the members um, of the mosque who have made these programs possible, um, especially during these times of uncertainty. Um, I request you all to please remember us in your du'as um, and in your prayers, inshallah, during this holy month. Thank you for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.